Hey everybody, welcome to Advantage One RV. My name is Josh the RV Nerd, and at 7,450 pounds, I gotta ask you the question. Are you down with VRB? <laughs> Specifically, the Venture Rear Bath back here. Now the model number, I, I think almost steers you the wrong direction. It says, oh, it's a rear bath, like that's the focus point. I don't think so. I think this one starts right up front with a king bed slide master bedroom lounge open relaxation suite up front. Little book nook where you can sit down, read a book, uh, you know, enjoy some scenic views. Like this is this is a very cool, fun floor plan. Then you get to the living room. You've got a, a great kitchen with uh, also with direct facing entertainment straight across from a super slide. And then when you do finally get to the rear bath, it's got this walk-in closet that you never saw coming. There's this thing's a little bit different from the average bear. And I gotta say, I like what I'm seeing. This is a sharp layout. And it doesn't take long to look around this one to see that it, it really deserves the, uh, the name like new. It has earned that quite a bit. And although I am going to give you just a quick pass through of the living area here, just so that you kind of have a little bit of a lay of the land, you got your bearings about you, I think what I'm actually wanting to do here is break my normal protocol and we're actually going to just straight start from the front and work our way back because like I said, I think this one's greatest asset is actually that front master bedroom relaxation suite. And it all begins with a little Legend of Zelda secret as these doors open. I think what I like best about the Legend of Zelda as compared to Mario <laughs> was that the princess was always in the same castle. No stupid mushroom guy ever had to say, sorry, she's somewhere else. Anyway, you get the idea. I'm, an, I'm a nerd. Um, look at this. This is like a big, beautiful fifth room, uh, fifth room, fifth wheel, there we go, bedroom king bed lounge suite up here in a travel trailer that, depending on the capacities of your vehicle, could be appropriately equipped half ton towable. Now, this has got a decent size to it. It's got a pretty decent tongue weight because it has a bedroom slide up front. I'm not saying every single half ton will handle this. I think in general, uh, pretty much any three quarter ton you ever imagined would handle it. But there are, I think, quite a few half tons that still can. Uh, again, assuming they have the appropriate capacities. But look how they, they're very crafty and creative on the storage on this model. Not just here in the living room. You're going to see that trend kind of uh, persist through the entirety of the RV. This is a dual fireplace model. You've got two electric space heat and Tootsie Toasters. Two, count them two. You've got one here in the bedroom and then one in the living room. And I tell you what, if you're gonna be winter camping and uh, even if you just leave the RV winterized, those two electric fireplaces will basically heat the RV for you, which is really cool. Now there's one other uh, little thing I really wanna point out here, which I think is kinda cool. I'm gonna pull this pillow out of the way because you notice there's storage behind the hanging closets right here. And in fact, those, uh, because most of this company's travel trailers have a traditional front bed. The front wall is basically pre-jigged already keep outlets there. So they said, you know what? Let's go ahead and leave those outlets. And then the other thing that I thought about when I was looking at this is I kind of called it a book nook earlier. You could very easily just kind of rearrange this on the fly real fast and have like a little kind of lounge space. Maybe it's been a long day. Maybe you need to unwind. Maybe you just, you want to curl up with a book or sit there or have a blanket, look out the window, whatever the case may be. That's a cute little, cute little space right there, I think. Now, uh, the bed slide here, again, is, it's a king bed slide like you find in a fifth wheel. I like those upper stands, uh, little phone kind of stands. I'm not going to call those CPAP shelves because obviously I, I don't feel they are quite large enough. But that bed slide is so deep. It makes everything in here look and feel nice and wide open. Oh, by the way, I, sorry, I don't normally do opening storage like live on camera like that, but that does have an easy lift bed right there. Now you might notice you're seeing some daylight. It actually can go all the way outside. We'll look at this again from the outside looking in um, when we uh, do step outdoors. Now, uh, this is a six foot nine ceiling. And you know, in years past, I, I was calling stuff a taller 6'9 ceiling. Really, it's become so common. The Jayco J Flight uh, was, uh, and really still is, so dominantly popular. And that's one of their qualities that a lot of other manufacturers over the years have started adopting a 6'9 ceiling uh, rather than 6.5 more commonly, which I think is kind of cool. Now, this is a couple's dining area right here. I may have missed something. 
I have not, at the time of this filming, located uh, the, like, a lot of times those two chair dinettes, freestanding tables, also will include a set of two additional folding chairs. I haven't found those in this RV. Um, there are some companies that don't ship those with the camper. Those are optional, so that's possible. That's what we're looking at here. I don't know that. Uh, if that's something you're curious about, at the time of this filming, what I can tell you is I don't believe they're included. If uh, you really want to see those things, though, give our team a call. We can check into that for you. Those those little extra details we can look into. Sometimes owners forget something at home. I don't, I don't know. Now, you saw that that is a nice theater recliner. It's a wall hugger. And I had one of those fully reclined in, like, napping mode, basically, plus a little armrest hidden storage there. I love how all the windows open right up for airflow. Um, easy direct viewing entertainment center right over there as well, which is something that nobody ever dislikes. Actually, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put you right in the driver's seat of this theater seat. We're going to start right down below. Again, we got the Tootsie Toaster right there. Especially if you want to kick your feet up and recline. Ooh, if you got chilly feet, oh, that would just be a wonderful thing. And you can kind of see the, the reflection off my bald head there. How you doing? <laughs> but, uh, that's, that's easy viewing. That's a no neck wrecker right there. Uh, I, I think absolutely qualifies, but what's cool is if we open that up, you can also see how that's a pantry tainment center with some big deep storage above. Cause this is all above the outside camp kitchen. We've got that eight cubic foot gas electric fridge freezer over here with a full drawer below. Oven doesn't look like it was ever used. Plywood drawers to the floor inset into that, uh, well, below rather, the solid surface countertop with stainless sink in there. And then as we start panning around, you see a full closet by the entry door, which also has a full viewing window, by the way. Handy shoe garage over here on the other side. And that over here is where your dedicated pantry space is going to be located. And what they kind of did here is it's a classic feature. If you go back through the history of a lot of campers, Fleetwood RV was very well known for doing these split double door entries into the master bedroom. And it's the concept is actually really starting to find a lot of popularity and a lot of traction again. And, and I think that's very cool. Now, by the way, uh, this full viewing window in the door is entry shade ready. And so that you don't have a big old collection of gnats by the door that you get to eat every time you walk in or out of the camper at night. That is a motion light. Or you can just turn it off or turn it on, whatever works for you. Now, uh, the uh, owners added a rear view camera. And thankfully, they remembered to bring the monitor with them. That is something a lot of people often forget to do. Now, okay, I finally, like, I've, I've been through this camper a couple times. If I see, like, I always, on a used RV, I try to find something that's not exactly correct this is the worst I've found. It's really a minor thing. This is a stick-on tile. It looks like maybe it got warm and slid down a little bit here, and it kind of went eh, a little bit. That's that's the pickiest I can find in this thing. I don't believe this RV was used a whole heck of a lot. I didn't have the opportunity to speak with the owners myself. It, it looks fresh as a daisy up here. Now, I want to draw your attention to this skylight up here, because we are going to see it again from the top down on the outside. And specifically, what I want you to see is there's no damage up here. I hope I'm not making you motion sick. I just realized that that looked like a Top Gun danger zone kind of shot right here. Cue the Kenny Loggins music. I'm not sure. But the reason I say that is because you'll see where there's some extra sealant applied around that skylight. I wholeheartedly believe it was done proactively and not reactively. I don't think they were fixing a leak. I think they prevented one from ever occurring. Uh, that's, that's my estimation. Now, back here in the bathroom, I got to get around this door real quick. Now, in the kitchen, we saw solid surface counters. That bathroom right there is still a sealed edge press membrane. I'm actually standing in the walk-in closet right now. I'll get you around here in just a second. But I just want to give you a look at everything. Now, uh, with that taller ceiling, that 6'9 ceiling I mentioned, if you're 6'3 or maybe 6'4 and shorter, you're going to be able to stand in the shower without ever worrying about bumping your head. Then I spotted something over here. I was like, wait a minute, what is that? And I was like, this is a really good sign, I think. It, this is what they did here, is they hung a little paper or, uh, toilet paper uh, roll, which I think is actually a pretty good spot for it. Let me get that back out of the way. But they put a little non-stick pad under that so this metallic thing didn't slide and grind and dig up the wood. That's a good sign. It's simple, but it's smart, and it's a really good sign of decent quality of ownership. And I have seen so many RVs over the years 
the absolute highest of class and the absolute most bargain basement built campers you've ever imagined in your life. And the number one most influential factor in the lifespan of that RV is not the build. It is 100% you, the owner. You, the owner, absolutely determine how nicely something holds up over time. And look at this. You know, a lot of rear bathrooms like this, they'll have a camp kitchen and then like some weird cabinet above it. They put that mini camp kitchen behind the entertainment center. So what they let us do here is have an additional full-on walk-in closet off of our master bathroom. And what I think is cool about that, I think this floor plan really benefits from that. Because we're, uh, remember we have that um, lounge in the bedroom up front, potentially eating into what could have been closet space, but it also gives us that nice windshield that makes it look and feel open. This right here, I think overcomes for potential storage deficiencies for personal effects that you otherwise would have had uh, in the uh, bedroom area. And just to kind of complete the bathroom here, I'm actually going to jump in the shower. Thankfully, you're not going to have to see that because nobody wants to see that. Take a look at the toilet. That's pretty fluffy friendly. There's nice space on both sides. And you know what? As long as I'm standing here in the shower, I might as well just kind of give you the visual because like I said, ooh, I am... It's getting warm. I've been freezing. I've been wearing that ninja sack for a while. Suddenly the weather's getting warm, which I'm not complaining about. This is nice, by the way, but I'm starting to become a uh, little bit more of a sweaty Betty. <laughs> and the first thing I, I thought about when I saw just the exterior look of the nose cap and the skin color package, I was like, ooh, that reminds me of like those Rockwood signature looks from uh, roughly like the 17, 18 area. And that's not a knock against these guys. That's not saying, oh, they're, they're living in the past or copying someone. I'm just saying it reminded me of that. And that's not a bad thing because that was actually one of my favorite generations of how Rockwood looked. It just, it has that almost like spaceship quality front end to it. Now, uh, below that front bench, this actually does still have a full outside storage compartment, which is something uh, that passes all the way through, by the way, which is something I was a little bit concerned about when I first saw this, because not every manufacturer who does a front bedroom remembers that we still need storage on the outside of the RV. Very handy if you're going to use that simple little side mount solar prep plug. Uh, we've got power jacks all the way around this thing, power awning, you know, power jack on the front, and it is enclosed and forced air heated down here. Now, that uh, I'm going to call this an extended season model, but it's going to have to hit and really stay frozen pretty hard for a while for that to start to become a, uh, a real serious concern on one of these. We'll weave our way back around to the door side where that camp kitchen is. I want to get you around the front of this thing. Just such a good look. Uh, I mean, I imagine sitting there with that in your rearview mirror. There's worse things you could look at, and that's the side of the camper right there that faces out toward the park. I got a feeling you're going to get a lot of rubbernecking going on here. People are going to be uh, wanting to knock on your door and, and see a tour of your camper. So maybe throw your deadbolt if you're not looking for guests. <laughs> magnet latches and slam, uh, well, magnet catches and, I'm, and slam latches, pardon me, all the way around. I do like, too, that they also left you easy access to the uh, storage under the bed here. You can kind of decide, do I want to partition that off? Right now it's left wide open, so you have that choice, you have that ability. This does ride on a Norco chassis versus a traditional I-beam frame. If you're familiar with our videos in the past, um, basically it's kind of like an aircraft style chassis. It's a huck bolted system. And it's one of the reasons that this thing's 7,450 pounds with two slides, because that is one of the things that helps peel a lot of weight out of this. I like how your uh, black flush and your outside shower are both in that rear corner. Really almost all the hookups are right in that rear corner, right above the sewer station. Got the handy little cargo rack on the back. That'll be rated for about 200 pounds. And as we mentioned inside, it's not just camera ready. The camera and the monitor are included with the sale of this RV. I'll flip that ladder down in just a second. We'll go up on the roof. But over here, I wanted to take a look at Patio Party Central where you got your power awning with your lighting. Um, the uh, outside camp kitchen here, actually hiding behind the entertainment center. That's something that Cougar does quite a bit of and more and more manufacturers are finding ways to give us small functional outdoor little utility stations here. We got dad's medicine cabinet for the barley water and the, uh, you know, uh, soda pop or depending on what you call it. I, I think that our folks down south over that polar vortex that uh, we, we all struggled through this uh, earlier this spring. I think some folks down south figured out if you leave it in your car, that's why we call it pop and not soda. <laughs> 
Overall, everything I'm seeing upstairs here also looks pretty good. Obviously, I'm trucking my way around up here. We do have a fully walkable roof. There is one little area of note I want to point out. I don't believe it's anything to be concerned about. I actually think it was a case of a severe level of proactive care in upkeep rather than reactive care because I can't find any problems on the inside. This is our kitchen skylight. You notice how there is that bright white bead of seal all the way around it. But below that, you see there's almost like this black, black uh, spray that was put down. I'm not exactly sure what all was done here. It looks like it has effectively now been triple sealed. I can't find any areas on the inside of the RV where it looks like it ever had a leak or anything like that. Maybe somebody was concerned. Maybe one time very briefly they saw something they didn't like and they jumped up here and went, <laughs> no way, man, I ain't gonna let that happen to my camper. That's the best guess I got because everything else up here looks factory fresh basically so leave me some comments let me know what you think about this one if you appreciate what we do here for you the all, all the extra information we provide make sure you take a second to click that subscribe button follow along here we're family owned and operated and just through your viewership you help support our family and all the families that we provide for at halet rv and here at advantage one so when you're ready we're ready we can get you hitching we can get you parts get you financing whatever you need we do trades just need the chance to work with you so take care stay safe have fun and have an a1 day everyone Yep, the old Legend of Zelda secret sound. Da, 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 da.